He says, Raymond Wilson, reflecting God's glory. Great day that the Lord has given. I look unto the hill which cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord. And we're looking for help this morning from the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We're looking for the Holy Spirit of God to teach us. In the book of Revelation, chapter 14, we find some scripture this morning. Uh, I want to try to deal with this complete chapter because it all fits in a paragraph that uh, we find in the 14th chapter. And it deals with the uh, proclamation of the future victory of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we know as we've gone through the scriptures, we find these things in the book of Revelations are yet to come. We know the church, Christ came, died on the cross, seated at the right hand of God, going through the church age in chapter 2 and 3, and then the throne of glory, and then the tribulation time. So he's uh, announcing uh, the proclamation of the future and the future uh, victory of the Lord Jesus Christ and how Jesus Christ will come and have victory just like he said in the word of God and shall we find and I use the word proclamation so I, I look the word I know it's proclaimed but I looked the definition up for proclamation it says it's an official announcement uh, made in a public uh, place and so we have a public announcement today in a public place we want this message to go out to the public that it might be known the future. God is a sovereign and a powerful God. He knows everything from the beginning to the end. He knew what it was before he created anything. He knew the timeline. God's mind is so great and so powerful and his ways are so much higher than our ways that sometimes his ways is past finding out. But we do know that God is a powerful God and he knows the timeline. Now I believe in whosoever will, let him come. Any person that will call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ can be born in the family of God. The God that we serve knew exactly who would be saved and who wouldn't be saved because that's the mind of God. But yet at the same time, he gave man a free will to do or to choose uh, whom he will. He can choose uh, to go in a, a broad way or he can choose to go in a narrow way, narrow way and follow the Lord Jesus Christ. And so it's a public announcement or an official announcement made in public to uh, <coughs> announce the Lord. The meaning of announcing is to declare something in an official or formal manner. And so that's what we're doing in an official or a formal manner, typically made in a public, by a public official. And so we are a public official. We've been saved, born in the family of God, and we're an ambassador for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we're carrying a message of, of God today. And so in the book of Revelation, chapter 14, we find in verse 1, I looked, and lo, a lamb stood on the mountain of Sinai, and with 144,000, having his father's name written in their forehead. So first of all, we see a, a public announcement or a proclamation concerning God's elect. The 144,000 that God uh, has prepared, and we read in chapter 7 where we found 144,000, where they had been saved uh, during the tribulation period. God sent two witnesses in, and those two witnesses uh, begin to teach and to prophesy and to send the gospel message out. And then we know there was 144,000 that were saved. And then we know there was a multitude of people that were saved. And so here the Lamb of God has come on the scene. And we find the Lamb of God with 144,000 uh, uh, proclaiming victory. They're proclaiming God's elect people. A uh, Jewish uh, a choir begins to sing in verse 2. He said, And I heard the voice from heaven as a voice of many waters, and as the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harp, harping uh, in their harps, and they sang a song, as it uh, were, a new song before the throne and before the four uh, beasts and the elders, and no man can learn the song but the hundred and forty-four thousand which were redeemed from the earth. And so now we find uh, the song. They've been sealed. 144,000 have been sealed out there. God select people. Uh, Genesis chapter 12 
talked about God's chosen people. God chose out Abraham. He said, I'll make you a great nation. And that he did. And we find them sealed out uh, in chapter verse 2. And in verse 3, we find them singing a song, a song that nobody can sing but the 144,000. We know in Revelation 4, uh, we find a, a song where the elders are singing, where the church is singing, and the church is singing, Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb of God, and surely He is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be lifted up. We hallowed the holy name of a holy God, and the elders and the beast and the, uh, around the throne of God's glory uh, were those that uh, angelic beings that were crying holy, holy, holy thank God the picture in heaven when we enter into heaven we'll be singing a new song but these are for the Jewish people and those that have been saved during the tribulation hour and God gives them a song uh, no one knows that song no one can sing that song except God's chosen elect people and they'll be able to sing praises to the glory of God then in verse 4 we find and there these are they which were not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb wherever he goeth. Uh, uh, they were redeemed from among them men, being the first fruits unto God and unto the Lamb. And so now we find not only is these uh, select people of God to be sealed, and they sang it a song that no one knows, but now we find them sanctified, pure, been set aside. They're God's elect, God's chosen people, and God has allowed them to be set aside that we might glorify the very name of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a Savior. Oh, what a Savior we have. What a Savior we can praise Him, lift Him up. In verse 6 through 7, we find a proclamation of the everlasting gospel. We find a first angel that flies through heaven, and God sends angels. Angel simply means a messenger. We know Michael is a warrior angel. Gabriel is a messenger. And God has many other messengers that he can send out uh, with a message. And here we find the uh, uh, first angel was a message. And his message was with the everlasting gospel of the Lord. Now this is your uh, period of time of tribulation. This is not under the uh, period of time of the church. This is salvation by grace. The Old Testament, salvation by grace. Gospel, salvation by grace. Church, salvation by grace. In the tribulation, salvation by grace. This is a period of time when God has chosen out a people. And his message, the first message was to announce the warning uh, against these people that was going through this tribulation period. And God has spoken to them about to make an announcement, and there they are to make the announcements, or to preach and make that announcement, and God sends a warning. So the first message is a warning, and today our warning is, we read the book of Revelation, we know the book of Revelation, and so we know trials, troubles, and tribulations come, and then great tribulations will come, and so we find here the gospel during the tribulation period, that when God sends them a warning, and then God announces the will of God, fear not, because God is there to protect the nation of Israel. And so he says to them, just listen to the everlasting gospel. As they have been preached, 144,000 have become witnesses for the Lord. They're preaching the angel of God flying through the air and sending a word of God, the announcement to the will of God, and then to announce the wrath of God. Not only we see the will of God, the love of God, but we see the anger of God. God's anger has been kindled because of the condition of the land and because idol worship has come on the land. But now God uh, says to us, heed the warning and heed the wrath of God. So we have a warning, a will, and then the wrath of God and it will come. And the first angel announces that to the earth. So what we're doing today is we are announcing what the angel gave to John on the island of Patmos 2,000 years ago and what we're preaching today, and we don't know how much longer. It might be 100 years, 200 years. It might be today. It might be tomorrow. It might be before uh, we get through this day that God would come and catch us away, and then it goes into the tribulation hour. And so it's a warning. God's sending that warning out. Then we find in verse 6 and 7, an everlasting gospel. Then in verse 8, we find another angel comes on the scene. This other angel gives us a, a proclamation 
of the fall of Babylon. Babylon will fall. Babylon is a system, and we won't deal much with that today because we'll deal with that when we get to the uh, 17th and the 18th chapter about the Babylonian system that will fall. And so the announcement is from this uh, uh, other angel that comes, the Babylonians or the Babylonian system will fall. And here we find the ecclesiastic Babylon or the religious Babylon and then the commercial uh, Babylon or the political Babylon. And those two systems that we've talked about throughout the book of Revelation, that is the government and religion, and they're coming together under a satanic power. And during the tribulation period, there'll be this period of time when God will bring judgment and there will be the fall of this system. Uh, then God will bring a new heaven and a new earth. He'll renovate this old earth uh, just like he did with a flood. But this time it'll be with fire. And God will renovate this old earth that we're in today. By God, there'll be no more curse after this one's renovated. God will come, set up his kingdom, and will glorify the Lamb of God. Then in verse 9 through 12, uh, we find the doom of Satan, that is, the message of doom uh, uh, there, verse 9, uh, he said, and the third angel came. So we've seen one, two, three, the third angel has now come uh, with a message or announcement or proclamation of these things will come to be. And they will be, just like God said they would in the Word of God, they'll be that way because God's Word will stand when everything else fails. God's Word will not lie to us. Devil will lie, Satan will lie, the serpent will lie, but the Lord God Almighty, the all sovereign, powerful God, the Bible that we have today, God's inspired Word, holy men, pin down the Word of God, and we find the Word of God to be true. So he's pronouncing doom. Third angel followed, saying, with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in their foreheads or in hand, the same shall drink the wine of the wrath of God. So he's talking about the wrath of God. When God's wrath will be poured out, and surely it will, just like God said, the word of God will go forth. And those that will listen, the Jewish people are now receiving vengeance because all of these years, the nation of Israel has been trampled down by other nations across this land. Nation after nation have turned against the Jewish people, and now God said, vengeance. Jewish vengeance has come, just like God has promised throughout the word of God. The vengeance will come in the days of Noah. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And yet there was doom on the face of this earth because of the corruption, of, because of satanic powers and idol worship and people rejecting God. And God sent a flood to protect his people. And there he protected Noah and the family and started over again. And then Isaiah uh, announced doom. In Isaiah chapter 6, he said, Woe unto the people, chapter 4. One, two, three, four, and five of the book of Isaiah talks about the woes on the nation that has turned against God and about the chastisement of the nation of Israel. And then John will proclaim that a doom. And then Jesus himself, Mark chapter 9, talked about the doom where the worm dieth not and the fire is never quenched. And Paul pronounced doom in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, pronounced doom. And Jude pronounced doom in Jude chapter 1, verse Verse 15, he talked about the doom and how, how this will come to be. And so we find uh, God has vengeance, and those that will take the mark will be under that, but those that refuse the mark, refuse to follow the Lord, uh, to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, they will go through that doom and that period of doom. And so we find that God's word will stand just like he said it would, uh, and it will throughout the course of ages. In verse 13, we find a proclamation concerning the saints, uh, and that is the Sabbath rest. He talked about redeem, uh, redeem those that refuse the, the image of Satan, those that refuse to take the mark, uh, 666 during this tribulation time. We'll be in heaven. We'll be glorifying God, praising God. Uh, and theirs will be in the tribulation hour when the government system and the religious system comes together and said, you must take this mark, the mark of the beast, uh, in order to buy or sell or go to the hospital or, or go to uh, the grocery store or whatever it might be. You'll not be able to do that during this tribulation period unless you take the mark of the beast. And so God has come to overcome that uh, through uh, his power. Verse 13 says, 
And I heard the voice of, from heaven saying unto me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, and henceforth ye shall save the Spirit, and that they may rest from their uh, labors, and uh, their works do follow them. So now he's giving them a Sabbath rest. He's giving them a time to rest. Uh, Jewish people always took the uh, from Friday night 6 to Saturday night 6 as a day of Sabbath as a rest. That was uh, 49 years and then the week of rest. Uh, and God gives us rest. God said, come unto me all you heavy laden and I will give you rest. And God will give us rest in those times and needs. Uh, but now God's going to give them rest. He will give them rest during this period of time. And then the last part of this uh, chapter deals with verses 14 through verses 20. And here we find uh, the proclamation concerning the battle of Armageddon. Now we'll see this a little further as we go into the scripture. He just makes mention of this as he goes through. Verse 20, And I looked and beheld a white cloud, and upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having in his hand, having on his uh, head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. So we know he's talking about the Lamb, the Lord Jesus Christ, coming back on a white cloud. Some said he's coming back on a white horse. And I said, I know that. And I said, well, he's coming back on a white cloud. And they said, he can't come on move. He's either going to come back on a cloud or he's either going to come back on a horse. I said, he's going to come back on a horse, name it white cloud. And so you can name it any way you want to name it. I just like that. It sort of fits. And I, I see here he's coming back on a white cloud. And he will come back on a white cloud. He is the Lamb of God. He can do whatever he wants to do. And I'll rejoice, shout, and praise God, glorify the Lamb of God. He is the Lamb of God. And he is coming back. And he finds coming back with a sick in his hand. Sickle means there's a harvest time that is ready. A battle of Armageddon is simply a harvest time and God will gather. All the nations will come together in the valley of Megiddo and in that valley of Megiddo when all those nations come against the nation of Israel, God coming back on a white horse, on a white cloud stands and puts his feet on Mount Olive and there he brings them in and takes that sickle. Angels he sends out three angels they'll go out with a sickle in their hand and they'll reap the harvest that God has already proclaimed. This is just a public announcement that tribulation's on its way. Trust in God and believe in God. And so another angel came up from the temple crying. So we now know that there's a temple in heaven because the angel comes out from that temple in heaven with a loud voice unto him that sat on the cloud thrust in thy sickle and reap for the time has come for the reap to the reap uh, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And so now we know the harvest time has come and it will come. In verse 17 another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven. Uh, he also uh, having a sharp sickle. So this is the second angel, the second sickle, sickle that's come out. Second angel that come out from the temple in heaven. And so we know there's a temple in glory. He's called, he called it in heaven. And so he's given us a picture. Uh, John on the island of Patmos sees this vision. These angels coming out of heaven. They're coming to the earth and they're coming with a sickle and they will uh, reap the harvest that is there. In verse 18, and another angel came out from the altar. One come out from the uh, temple. This one's coming out of the altar that's in the temple, which had power over fire. And he cried with a loud cry unto them that had a sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the cluster for the vine of the earth and the grapes are ripe. And so now we find that this is coming to be and it will come to be just like God said. God will come back to this earth and he'll put his foot on Mount Olive, according to Zechariah chapter 14, verses 1 through 4. He'll come back, put his feet on Mount Olive. Mount Olive will split, and then God will bring judgment. We find in Isaiah 63, the Lord will come uh, with vengeance uh, on those that turn against his people. We find in Revelation 14, 14, where we hear that it will reap the harvest that has come. Then we find in Revelation 16 and Revelation 19, we'll get there, we'll continue more with a harvest of God as he harvested uh, the Babylonian system and brings them down. And so we find the fire, he'll finish the war in Revelation chapter 19, uh, verses 17 through 19. He'll finish this war, but it's woven from here on out. So we can't put it all in one 
pigeonhole on one particular place, but we do see it coming. It's on the way, just like God said it will. He'll finish that war that God has provided, uh, and it will come, just like God placed in the Word of God. And so I read through the Bible for thus far, what we've studied thus far, the proclamation or the announcement of God, uh, the book of Revelation. He announced uh, first of all, in the first chapter, he announced to you and I an uh, announcement of the church, uh, how the church would come. First, in chapter 1, it's the names of God, the names of the Lord Jesus Christ. Then he had made a public announcement of the church and what the church must go through. He made a public announcement of the throne of God. In chapter 4 and chapter 5, he made a public announcement of the seal. The sealed book will be opened and the seal wrapped of God uh, will be poured out. In chapter 7, he made a public announcement of the chosen people, the 144,000 that we just read you talked about. And then chapter 8 and 9, uh, the announcement of the trumpet, the raft of God, the seven trumpets, seven seals, seven trumpets, and then there'll be seven vows that will come. And then chapter 10, the announcement of the little book that was sealed up, the mystery of that little book. Chapter 11 was the two witnesses uh, that came on the scene and preached. And the announcement, chapter 12 and 13, is the warfare between the dragon and the two beasts and how God received victory there. Chapter 14 is simply announcing the victory over the nations that God has proclaimed. The Lord Jesus made a proclamation before he left the earth in the upper room. As he talked to the disciples, and they were weary about him going away, didn't understand it all, but he said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again to receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. Mama said, how are we going to know the way? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. He is the door. He is the Lamb of God. He is the only way to enter into heaven's glory. And you and I have that opportunity today. I'm glad one day I bowed on my knees, called on God. God saved my soul, sealed me by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, and gave me eternal life in glory. One day when the rapture comes, or either I'm, I'm called away through death, I'm going to heaven because God prepared a way on the old rugged cross that I might have salvation. What God is declaring to you is the proclamation of these things coming so you and I can be prepared to meet the Lord. If you haven't been prepared, to meet the Lord, find you a place somewhere, call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God said, if you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Whosoever will, Jew, Gentile, born to free, can be saved and born into the family of God. So I trust you. Call on the name of the Lord. You know God is your personal Savior. And we'll all rejoice in heaven one glorious day.